you put a pad like that and then or you go like this and then if the let's say a uh, uh, a policeman. <laughs> no, no, they are not. No, 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 no. They are tough. They are tough. You are not going to draw a, a policeman looking like this, you know? No. <laughs> Even though many look like that. <laughs> that doesn't convey in a gag a policeman. Like it doesn't, like it doesn't convey like a soldier even though probably many look like that. <laughs> you know? But this guy could be very much a soldier. <laughs> but this guy could be very easily a professor. <laughs> but this guy will look ridiculous as a professor. <laughs> There's many professors who look like that. <laughs> So we, we work a lot with cliches because they are necessary. You know, like like a painter is always like this, you know, with beard. That will be a painter if he has one of these, you know. Then he could be a bohemian if he's one of these like this, you know, he put a flower and then goes like this, you know. Or I don't know. But if, even if you put a, so, a hat of a soldier, it doesn't look like a soldier. And probably after many years in the front, you would look like that, you would have that type of shape. But then the, the, the first thing that comes to your mind is why that soldier has a beard instead of the joke. So when you're doing a, a cartoon, you try to simplify everything around the cartoon so it's easy to understand. In Mad Magazine, had another direction. Because it, it was never about the gag. It was satire, it was a story. So they have a lot of fun putting things in the background. There was that, that guy who created Max, and it was Har Harvey Kurtzman. And Harvey loved filling up the panels with lots of stuff. So you have a guy walking, and there was a snake coming out of the hole, and something coming down from an apple, and all kinds of very funny stuff. But that was in purpose, because it was a, a story. It was not a a particular, just a single guy. So, Matt had that, that thing of many, many things involving a panel, which worked very well. But simplicity is a key of cartooning. Many of the cliches are disappearing. Uh, when every time you need a secretary, well, you put in the glasses, you put the hair, you know. Uh, for efficiency, not, not for not any other reason. And then you did this, you know. Well, that was a common thing for a secretary, a typewriter. But you can ask any kid now, what is that? Is that a, a coffee machine? <laughs> They only have an idea of what that thing is because they've never seen one. <laughs> Every secretary now, they don't change their face. <laughs> they still like that, but it'll be like this, and it'll be like this. It, it, it'll have, it, she'll have a computer. Any time you draw this, you'll have to put a computer because that's exactly now what what is the, the, the common denominator on a desk. When I start, when the computers appeared, I couldn't draw a computer because everybody thought, everybody thought they had a television set on the desk because the, the computers then were kind of like this, you know. And they had things like that. And, uh, those were the, the small ones. When I would look at the computers, there was a computer room full of, of equipment. But, so it was very difficult to be a modern cartoonist if you didn't have any words. Because when I drew a computer, it looked like a television set. So once it became common that everybody had a computer, then I felt very free to draw computers because everybody knew that there was a computer. Uh, people in, in the old cartoons, like in the New York, everything, every time they, they read about uh, the stock market, well, they had a little machine that looked like like, like that, and then it had a thing like this, and it had some big wheels inside, and a little piece of paper come out. And it was like a 
we will own that. All the news were printed there, but that machine is so obsolete, nobody will know what that is, because now everybody reads there. On, on the television screen, they will read the, the stock market. So many things slowly disappear. And cartoons have used cliches in many ways. Uh, a desert island, which is a very common gag that all of us use. <laughs> How many people have been on a desert island? <laughs> probably one, <laughs> you know what's about it, but I have done probably thousands of cartoons about desert islands because they're very funny, you know, I, I have the time all the time. But that's a cliche, like many other things that never happen. And then with one thing that you have to be more careful all the time is about being politically correct. A lot of times you were making jokes about something and people will get very offended. Well, humor is a very delicate step. This is like a line and you're walking in your line and if you go this way, it's too obvious, too bad. And if you go this way, it's too dramatic. When you're drawing something very... Like I got a lot of mail from a cartoon like that. A lot of people got very offended. There was a hole, and next to it was just this, you know. And, and, and a blind person came. You know. <laughs> 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 so I walked like that. And people were very mad. You know. well, why do you think I'm not afraid of getting blind? If I, if, if I get blind, I lose my career. But, I'm not making fun of the blind person, you know, it's, it's a cliche. To, so every time you were do, doing a job, you had to think, okay, who am I offending now? And the more that people get more correct, the humor starts disappearing. Because a lot of things we cannot make fun anymore, because you start getting mail about it. <laughs> you, even cruelty to animals, you know, I mean, you can do a joke about an animal, and you get inundated by, by mail. So, maybe, maybe my cartoons probably are very incorrect here. And uh, uh, death is, a, is, a, is a, probably the most dramatic thing that can happen to someone. No doubt, you know, <laughs> between losing your parents, losing your kid. But in cartooning, we have used death as a, as, as a very strong element for humor. Because if you make fun of things to ameliorate or to make it nicer. Many of the political problems, you draw them funny so you don't cry. And so you have, but you have to be very careful. One of the jokes that I did with the margin of two months, it was like, uh, Thank you. 